Despite ongoing advances in the management of chronic heart failure, patient outcomes for acutely decompensated disease have not improved. Across Canada, patients hospitalized for heart failure continue to suffer frequent complications and 16.5% die during their initial hospitalization. An examination of the pathophysiology of acute decompensated heart failure identifies promising new avenues for treatment. During heart failure, the heart cannot circulate enough blood at normal cardiac filling pressures to meet the metabolic needs of the brain, kidneys, heart and other vital organs. The body responds by releasing neurohormones. Certain neurohormones help maintain blood pressure, but over time they cause heart failure to worsen. One of these neurohormones is renin, released by the kidneys in response to decreased perfusion and increased sympathetic activity. Renin activates the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, or RAAS, by cleaving angiotensinogen in the liver to produce angiotensin 1, which is further converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs. Angiotensin 2 binds to blood vessel walls, causing vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates release of endothelin from endothelial cells. Angiotensin 2 and endothelin act on vascular smooth muscle, causing constriction of the coronary arteries and systemic arteries and veins. While vasoconstriction helps maintain blood pressure, it can also have maladaptive effects. For example, the weakened heart must pump harder against increased resistance in the systemic arteries, while constriction of the coronary arteries further compromises the myocardium supply of oxygen. Venous constriction also contributes to displacement of fluid into the lungs and other tissues. Angiotensin II stimulates the adrenal glands to release aldosterone. Aldosterone causes the kidneys to reabsorb sodium into the bloodstream, and with it, water. Sodium and water retention cause a state of fluid overload that is exacerbated by venous constriction. Gaseous exchange in the lungs is inhibited by pulmonary edema. Build-up of fluid in and around the lungs increases the physical work of breathing. Patients with acute left-sided heart failure feel short of breath and fatigued. When right-sided heart failure occurs, fluid accumulates in the liver and legs. Apart from the activity of the RAAS, the body tries to maintain blood pressure using other mechanisms, such as releasing epinephrine from the adrenal glands and norepinephrine from sympathetic nerve endings. These catecholamines increase heart rate and contractility, in addition to causing arterial and venous constriction. Over time, chronic volume overload and the activity of angiotensin II, aldosterone and endothelin stimulate pathologic cardiac remodeling. The interstitial fibrosis and myocyte apoptosis associated with cardiac remodeling decrease heart wall elasticity, further inhibiting the heart's ability to relax and pump effectively. In summary, the neurohormonal response to heart failure causes vasoconstriction, fluid retention, and increased heart rate and contractility. In turn, these processes initiate a vicious cycle of further myocardial injury and escalating heart failure. Fortunately, additional neurohormonal responses modulate the activity of the RAAS, endothelin, epinephrine and norepinephrine.